Journaling is a habit I've been practicing for years. It's helped me not only get to know myself on a deeper level, but it's also been one of the most helpful tools for me when it comes to processing and releasing my emotions. It's a safe way to express exactly what you feel without fear of being judged. Writing allows me to see things from a different perspective and identify the feeling that might be clouded by the chaos of daily life. Because journaling is about quieting the external noise and going on a journey within. In this video, I'll be sharing the journaling techniques I use for emotional healing, as well as tips for anyone that's just getting started. First, you want to pick a journaling tool that best suits your needs. From handwriting to digital journaling and even art journaling, there's something out there for everyone. My personal favorite is pen and paper. Our minds tend to be very fast paced and writing really forces you to slow down your thinking and it gives you space to reflect. But if you're more of a digital person, there are plenty of apps or web-based services that you can use. If your intention to journal is for emotional healing, you might also find it helpful to use a combination of both handwriting and digital. The truth is, emotions can come up like uninvited guests throughout the day. There have been plenty of times where this has happened to me and I don't have my physical journal with me, nor the privacy to sit down and write. So in those instances, I'll open my notes app on my phone and type a short version of whatever is going on in my mind and then I can expand on it later on in the day. There's no right or wrong way to go about this. Pick whatever medium or mediums work best for you. The point is to find an outlet that helps you ground your thoughts and feelings and get them out of your inner space. Before we get into the techniques, I think it's really helpful to create the right atmosphere and set the mood, especially when we're journaling to heal. So many of us are carrying years of pain from constantly suppressing our emotions. We've become experts at keeping them in, that letting them come out can take a little bit more effort and can sometimes even be a little bit scary. That's why I find it so helpful to create a calming and relaxing environment. A space that allows me to open my heart and be vulnerable lighting a candle, diffusing essential oils like lavender or frankincense, playing peaceful music, having a cup of tea, all of these things help me create feelings of peace internally and externally. I don't always do all of these things at once. Sometimes I'll just pick one or two, but the idea is to create a welcoming space for my deepest thoughts and feelings to come through and get the most out of each of my journaling sessions. And to help you create this type of atmosphere, I'll be posting a video right after this one that will be a journaling music playlist with peaceful, relaxing songs that you can play in the background while you journal. So once that's up on the channel, I'll have it linked here as well as in the description box below. Now let's move on to the actual journaling. There are many journaling techniques to choose from depending on what your intention is, but I want to share the top three that I have found most helpful for healing emotional wounds. The first one is to use journal prompts. This one is most helpful if you're new to journaling and you have absolutely no idea where to start. If you're new to writing, journaling can feel a little bit weird and uncomfortable. You might overthink it and either not write anything at all or never really dive deep enough. That was my case in the beginning. I would either be staring at a blank piece of paper or I'd write about surface level things like what I had for breakfast, which is fine. There's no right or wrong way to journal. But in this video, we're talking about emotional healing, which requires us to go a little bit deeper. With a journal prompt, your attention is being guided to answer a specific question, so it helps you move past that initial writer's block. Journal prompts can also help you shed light on parts of yourself that you might not have noticed otherwise. So this is a technique that's also really great for self-discovery and getting to know yourself better. I've become aware of emotional wounds I didn't know I had simply by using this technique. 
I'll post a list of journaling prompts for healing right here so you can pause the video and take a screenshot if you'd like. Another helpful technique is to free write, also known as stream of consciousness writing. With this technique, you basically write whatever thoughts and feelings come to mind. So you can kind of think of it like venting to a friend. I really like using this one when I know something is bothering me, but I can't really pinpoint it just yet. So I usually start off by saying something like, I'm feeling annoyed or I'm feeling really down and I don't know why. And then I just go from there. I keep writing and writing until I get to the root of my emotions. Many times I find that it was something someone said or did that triggered a wound from my childhood. And if you've done any kind of emotional healing before, you know that our childhood is the place where many of our wounds stem from. This is also a helpful journaling technique to use when you just want to check in with yourself and see how you're doing emotionally. For this, you can set a timer for 10 to 15 minutes and see what comes up for you during that time. And unless the journaling session helped me discover something really valuable, I will usually not reread these journal entries because I see this type of journaling sort of like a brain dump. So once I've poured all of my thoughts and feelings onto the paper, I don't want to invite that energy back in. I've done the work to release it, so I let it go and I continue with my life. The third technique I want to share is to write a forgiveness letter. This one is helpful when you're working on healing something that involves another person or even your past self. If you're working on healing your inner child, this letter could be directed to one of your parents or maybe the kid that bullied you in school when you were a kid. Or maybe you're processing the death of a loved one or the end of a relationship, a breakup or divorce. You can write this letter to the person it involves. Talk about what happened, how it made you feel, how it's impacted your life. You really want to go into detail and get all of your emotions out. But you want to write with the intention that you're forgiving this person and the situation. This is one of my favorite techniques for emotional healing. Addressing the letter to a specific person makes it seem very real and can help you get closure on whatever you experienced. You never have to send this or read this to the other person, but you're able to fully express yourself without holding back. It's just a powerful way to free yourself from any pain you might be holding on to. To take this a step further, after I write the letter, I will usually read it out loud and then I'll burn it or shred it to fully release and let the situation go. If you happen to have a picture of the person involved, you might find it helpful to read the letter while you're looking at the picture to make it even more real for yourself. And no matter what journaling technique you choose, don't judge what you write. Let your thoughts and emotions flow. This is a safe space for you to be vulnerable and to write exactly what you're feeling. Anybody that knows me will tell you that I'm not one to use profanity. It's just not in my nature. But on occasion, when I'm very, very upset about something and I'm journaling, those words want to come out and I give myself full permission to do so. I find it really helpful to remind myself that I am not my feelings. Whatever words I write are simply the vehicle through which my feelings choose to be expressed. For me, it's all a part of processing my emotions. It's allowing my feelings to pass through me and release them as I write. So don't overthink it, let go of perfection, don't worry about grammar or spelling. This is not for anybody else to read. Remember, this is for you and nobody else. So just go with the flow and write whatever comes to mind. To fully reap the benefits of journaling, I recommend making this a habit. As long as we're human, we're always going to have emotions, right? So it's in our best interest to have tools like journaling to help us process our emotions in a healthy way. So I want to challenge you to set aside some time every day for the next 30 days and journal even if it's just for 5 minutes. 
When you're creating a new habit, showing up consistently is way more important than the amount of time you dedicate to it. So start small, five minutes a day, and commit to it for the next 30 days. After the 30 days, you can decide if this is something you'd like to do daily or maybe just once a week. But no matter what, you now have a tool that you know will help you process and heal your emotions in a healthy way. And whatever your emotional wounds are, no matter how big or how small, I hope journaling becomes a balm that soothes you, that comforts you in difficult times, and that helps you find the peace that lies within. I wish you all the best in your healing journey. Take care and I will see you soon.